Hey guys, here we go into a video breaking down Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia. Now, this is going to be one of the more interesting fights of the year. Uh, I think that it's going to be much more competitive than people are giving Danny Garcia credit for. And I think there are a, really, a lot of really interesting things going on in this fight that uh, maybe people are not going to be paying attention to um, going into it as we still haven't really been able to gauge how great Spence is or could be. Now, a few things that we're going to be talking about. Well, number one, Errol Spence is not really a counterpuncher, right? He's a come forward, one punch at a time, kind of beat you up when he gets you on the ropes. Um, <clears throat> and as you can notice here, uh, as he gets Porter in the in the ropes, Porter's going to be blasting out of his position. Errol Spence is ready for this. Uh, so he knows to counter in these positions uh, because he has the ropes or he has the ring cut off. He knows that... Sean Porter has to make a positional change. He has to go first. And Errol Spence is ready for him to go first by taking a step straight back and throwing this straight left hand right into his face. Now, I want to break down a few things first um, and kind of talk about them. Uh, number one, Errol Spence fights kind of in a straight line. Now, this is why he's not really a counterpuncher. It's not because he can't counterpunch. As we can see here, he can clearly find the timing. Uh, but he has a difficult time staying on the line and countering. Um, and that's going to be a really interesting idea for this fight as well. Uh, but what I want to talk about is how he kind of has this um, Marvin Cook stance, right? Where his feet are in a line. And that means that his head, when he's punching, can only be in this, whoops, in this line. Um, it can only be in this line in between his heels um, if he's looking to generate any kind of power. Uh, so as he goes forward, he doesn't really have the ability to generate any power because he doesn't cross any of his line uh, to generate it. And that's why when he lands an uh, incredible shot like this, Sean Porter is not going down, uh, even though he's in the perfect position to be attacked by that shot. Um, and Errol Spence lands it perfectly. And, and it doesn't even phase Sean Porter. He's able to move out of that position. So it's mostly an arm punch uh, simply because of that technical I, that technical problem. And what I want to talk about, if the way that you want to look at that is, if you look at Sean Porter, his weight versus Errol Spence's weight, and how he has a one foot on each side of Errol Spence, right? Lead foot dominance, right? This is a very important idea. But when you want to generate power, you need to be able to bring your head from one side of your line to the other and in order to do that generate power and cross your opponent's line uh, you have to get one foot on the other side of your target and Errol Spence is not able to accomplish this task by having his feet in a line now I talk about this extensively if you want to check out the Marvin Cook video um, also if you're interested in coaching um, if you're learning how to become a fighter you're learning about your line you're learning how to counter punch you're learning how to um, you know do all the things on your line that you want to do pull counters, um, learn how to throw a good cross, learn how to throw a good jab, learn how to throw, you know, whatever. Uh, check it out. I do personalized coaching on there. And also the post-fight breakdown for this video is going to be on there as well, uh, no matter who wins. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the problems with uh, Errol Spence's technique in terms of his ability to counter punch on the line as well as his ability to, to generate power. Um, and for someone who lands so many punches, um, he doesn't produce nearly as many knockdowns as someone, you know, like who lands cleanly like Keith Thurman. Generally, uh, somebody goes down. Generally, generally. Um, but Errol Spence is a big dude, right? So a lot of pressure and it usually works for him. However, um, as we can see here, when he's in this straight line here with his feet here, he can only enter the line from one position. Now, he doesn't really get his weight to the front foot and then blast through and throw a cross. He always enters kind of from the back foot and throws the same jab and the same straight left hand. Now, he does land this shot, but again, I want to I want to talk about the idea that he's not really generating a lot of power because he's not really crossing the line a lot. So this is mostly an arm punch. Again, someone as big as Errol Spence catching Sean Porter, fainting him, pushing him to the back half of his line, and landing a perfect, clean, crisp, straight left hand, and doesn't even phase him. Doesn't even phase him. He's already back on the line, ready to go, and ready to start setting up more counters. Okay, As you can see, this is in round 2 of 12. Um, at 151, we're going to be using many more clips from round 2 in this fight um, as we go through. But... um. As we can see here, Errol Spence entering in the line with his feet in that same line and 
Sean Porter not having any problems really getting around fighting um, Errol Spence's stance, right? And again, that same straight left hand, the one that he rocked him with, not really rocked him, but he caught him with a real good shot. But it didn't hurt him. It didn't drop him. He's throwing the same shot on the same rhythm, the same kind of timing. But he didn't faint this time, right? But the, the important idea here is that he's entering the line from the same position. He's not, he doesn't really have an active guard. He's not really crossing the line. He's not changing positions. Uh, he always enters the line from the same position and throws one of two punches. This right, left hand or this jab here. Um, and for fighting someone like Danny Garcia, has, who has such incredible timing and rhythm um, and you know timing, very importantly, uh, but also a good left hook, uh, an ability to counter and take advantage of someone entering in the same position all the time um, is going to be very, very, very important. And I think that that's going to be a big factor in the fight uh, when we take a look at it. Now, a few other ideas here um, just before we get into – well, actually, as we can see here, Danny Garcia with the left hook, right? Now, I do want to point out that he's eating a body shot. And in order to take this uh, or to make this shot, but I also want to point out that this is in the fourth round of the Ivan Red catch fight. And by the fourth round, he had figured out the, the rhythm and the timing um, that he was able to start making counters. But as you can see, he's still eating a body shot to deliver this counter. However, I do want to point out that um, the – how do you want to say this? Uh, he is landing an excellent shot and getting a lot of power in it and meeting him on that same that same beat, right? And uh, able to land that shot before Ivan Redcatch can get his his um, his weight out of this position. And I want to point out that Errol Spence is not super quick at getting out of this position either. Uh, and as well as the fact that he doesn't have his hand up when he's throwing this shot. Now, these are patterns for Errol Spence in a lot of Errol Spence's fights um, where he's not always using the most amount of defense. Um, now, also trying to control the line with the jab here. Um, but this is also another one of those things what I ex that I expect the fight to happen or that I expect to happen in the fight is a lot of, you know, I know that he was teasing um, uh, Devin Haney about <laughs> holding Gamboa, but uh, Errol Spence will do his share of holding as well. Um, as you saw in the Sean Porter fight, uh, anytime Sean Porter was coming forward and Errol Spence wasn't in position to counter or wasn't ready for a counter or more than one punch was being thrown because I do want to point out that Errol Spence does take a step back here and throw his jab, but after he throws his first punch, he looks to hold and kind of tie up. Uh, again, he's not really a counter puncher himself or not a counter puncher. Well, he's not really a counter puncher, but he's also not really a combination puncher either, even though he can fight on the line pretty well, which we're going to talk about as well. Uh, but let's see. So this clip here with Errol Spence, again, throwing this body shot here and Sean Porter blasting out of it and landing a great right hand on Errol Spence. Again, I want to paint, uh, point out that when Errol Spence gets to the front foot, he doesn't have his right hand up. So he's not blocking the left hand, and you can see that he's not blocking the right hand here uh, as Sean Porter is easily able to time him. Now... I do want to point out, yeah, it's the eighth round here, um, but this is after a lot of the fight and this pace and this rhythm had been fought at. Um, and in spite of the fact that um, they were both having a lot of success, as I think Errol Spence lands a left hand there, um, there's a lot of infighting here. What I want you to pay attention to, Errol Spence doesn't really throw any left hand or any right hands um, on the line. Um, sometimes he does counter and sometimes he does throw the jab when he moves onto the line. But after throwing his straight left hand, he doesn't throw his right hand anymore. No right hook there. And I'm going to cut it here um, as he's about to throw a right hook. But I want you to pay attention to here after he throws his straight left hand, no right hook. Then he gets attacked here, crosses the line with the left hand, no right hook on the way back, right? Transferring his weight, not really using his right hook a lot. This is going to be a big factor in the fight as well against... Uh, Danny Garcia because Danny Garcia has such a good left hook. Uh, Errol Spence is going to need his right hook to isolate Danny Garcia from the front foot and prevent him from being able to throw that punch. Uh, but as we can see, Errol Spence doesn't actually do that a lot. And that means that Danny Garcia is going to be able to get to the front foot and set traps with his weight 
um, and blast out of those positions uh, with his left hook. Now, we I do want to point out that uh, in this clip, this is where Errol Spence does some of his best work. Uh, and this is where he is actually dropping Sean Porter. But he's setting this shot up so much better with his control and his weight by keeping his lead hand on Sean Porter's head that he's getting a much better weight transition through Sean Porter. But also, Sean Porter is in position one on the front foot. And Errol Spence is making a perfect attack with the straight left hand. Uh, but he's in a much better position to deliver his power in this scene. Um, uh, I don't have the, the foot angling that I can show you a little bit better, but uh, Sean Porter is also moving out of this position, about to throw his own left hand, um, which is increasing uh, Errol Spence's power. But what I want to focus on is the idea that Errol Spence can fight on the inside and utilize his right hand, um, but... For whatever reason, it's usually a lot later in the fight when he's not trying to box you or trying to whatever, whatever, you know. Um, but I'm not sure that this technique here is going to work super well against Danny Garcia. Um, but we're going to take a look at some more, a uh, few more Errol Spence clips. So Errol Spence entering the line uh, from the exact same position and uh, Sean Porter setting traps, right? Trying to counter over the top of it and chase him back. Now, Sean Porter had success with this because Sean Porter can pendulum step really well. Notice he gets his weight all the way on the front foot. Now he's going to create a pendulum step, transfer his weight to the back foot. As you can see here, his foot winds up in the same position, allowing him to continue dragging his weight forward into the next shot. So again, it's from a back foot to the front foot, and then you bring your back foot into the same position your front foot was in, cross the line, pendulum step. Uh, FYI, we train and and i teach this move in a variety of different ways on the double end bag the heavy bag um and in the shadow boxing uh, so if you're looking to learn the pendulum step and how to work this move into your shadow boxing into your heavy bag routines uh check it out on my patreon it's 20 bucks to sign up 20 bucks a month um and yeah we do all kinds of coaching and teaching these moves um especially we've been going over it uh, in the Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez fight, uh, going over the pendulum step as that was such a crucial move in the later half of the fight for Lomachenko. But um, anyway, uh, continuing, uh, I don't think this this was going to be a big factor for um, Errol Spence uh, because Danny Garcia is not really that good at pendulum stepping and getting his weight this way and that way and bringing his weight back and forward. Um, however, I do anticipate Danny Garcia being stuck here much more often um, after pushing Errol Spence off the line and then being able to maybe find some body shots. Um, but I don't anticipate Danny Garcia being uh, that level of an athlete. Now, we already looked at this clip. Um, very similar, right? He enters the line here on the jab, enters the line here on the straight left hand. But Danny Garcia is going to be much better at countering this shot with the left hook than Sean Porter as Danny Garcia is actually a counterpuncher. Um, and uh, again, Errol Spence, even though he gets his weight a little bit to the front foot here, as he gets his foot outside of Sean Porter, right? And then blasts his cross right there. Uh, still not really moving his head at all. Not a lot of head movement going on. Very important idea as well. Uh, let me close some of these before I run out of space. Now, again, when Errol Spence trying to counter, because his feet are in this line here, his head can only go back and forward, and he doesn't really have an opportunity to get his head off of the line that Sean Porter is attacking. So what happens is Sean Porter transfers his weight and gets his weight across Errol Spence's line, and he's able to land his punch. Again, take a look at their feet position. As you can see, the difference here and no difference here in the angle. I know it's really slight. If you were to move those over, it's not nearly, but... You can see the difference in their angle, and that allows Sean Porter to get his head to the other side of that line as Errol Spence is attacking this position. He has to just get his head to the other side of that when Errol Spence's glove gets here, but that also puts him into position to land his own straight right hand, as you can see here, when he brings his weight to the front foot. Boom. Transfers his weight to the front foot here with his head. His back foot's much farther, but Errol Spence's head stays on this line. That's why he gets hit with this shot. Now, this is going to be very a very dangerous angle for Errol Spence as he gets on the line with Danny Garcia when, after, when we start taking a look at the Danny Garcia clips. But again, uh, Errol Spence getting stuck on that front foot, entering in the same position, 
and then ending in the same position, hands down, um, and in a position, in a rhythm and timing that even though there's not a lot of lead hand control that I'm showing here, um, Errol Spence does show that he does do that. Um, so they're a little bit past that phase of this fight here. Um, but they each have that rhythm and timing that Sean Porter knows um, to catch this or to, to keep this timing in this rhythm. So I don't think that Danny Garcia is going to have a particularly difficult time getting this rhythm from Errol Spence either. And I, again, I think that that's going to be a really important idea as well, that these rhythms and timings are predictable and that uh, Danny Garcia is going to be able to figure them out as well. Now, this clip is especially important as well because it shows that Errol Spence doesn't really have a way to control that front foot. And he, if he can't control the front foot, Danny Garcia is going to be able to get there and set up his left hook all night long, as long as he's willing to throw it. But that also means that if he's not protecting that space, that Danny Garcia is going to be able to throw a lot of straight right hands, especially countering Errol Spence's jab, which we know he's capable of doing. Um... Also, just straight up throwing it to the body and then crossing the line as he sees that, um, and this is Sean Porter figuring out, remember when we got hit with that straight left hand before when Errol Spence took that, straight, that step back? Well, Errol Spence, again, not really countering, right? But he's letting his opponent into these positions um, and then trying to move into them. Not usually punching with his opponent, right? But allowing it to be at the end of the beat or the end of the weight transition, Um and it creates a different timing. And I think that Danny Garcia is going to be a little bit better in these positions than Sean Porter was. But um, again, not really a counter puncher, right? As Sean Porter moves into that position and then moves to the back foot, um, he's still taking all these steps and transferring his weight, but not really uh, just slipping, right? Always moving off the line and taking a step. Again, it's a different kind of rhythm or a different kind of counter punching. Um, and it's going to be much easier for Danny Garcia to keep up with that pace of counter punching uh, because he likes to be on the line. Now, uh, again, Errol Spence doesn't use a lot of right hooks, okay? Not a lot very at all. But in this clip, he's using a right cross as he does get to the front foot, kind of. What really happens is Sean Porter crosses his line, and then as he's crossing the line again, uh, Errol Spence crosses with him or transfers his weight to the back foot and is able to catch him with that shot um, as Sean Porter is crossing his own line, um, or Sean Porter is crossing Errol Spence's line, um, using this tactic to kind of defend the line. This is going to be an extremely important part of the fight for Errol Spence if he is to keep Danny Garcia from getting to the front foot and being able to make attacks against him and um, um, set up his left hook and uh, freely let his straight right hand go uh, to the body or to the head. Um, as I expect, Danny Garcia is going to throw a, a massive amount of straight right hands uh, throughout the fight. Now, oh man, I got a lot of clips open. Okay, let's see what we got. So, and then we took a look at that clip again. The cross, very important there. Now, this is essentially what I'm expecting the fight to look like. Um, straight right hands from Danny Garcia, opening up that position. Errol Spence trying to counter, but that same rhythm, that same timing, and maybe Danny Garcia finding him with the straight with the left hook here. Um, now that can be a left hook or a left cross. In Danny Garcia's case, it's very likely going to be a left hook. Um, but uh, that is best case scenario for Danny Garcia. Um, so let's kind of take a look at some clips from Danny Garcia and see what what we think is going to happen. Eating the body shot to eat, give him the left hook. Again, we already took a look at that. Um, but this is something that Danny Garcia is really good at, um, setting up that left hook. Now getting a piece of that shot and then still countering the left, left upstairs. But very quick with the timing, right? Eating that shot one, I think he's blocking it, and then able to throw that shot. But again, Errol Spence doesn't really uh, set that shot up super well. He doesn't really mask it very well, uh, or very often rather. Uh, and he doesn't always have his right hand up either. 
Now, we do know that he's going to be part, more particular in this fight because everyone knows Danny Garcia has a left hand. Um, but one of the ideas that I want to be clear is that a lot of people are probably saying, well, he's never fought anyone as big as Errol Spence. And people are always criticizing my channel about me never picking the guy who's bigger or taking into physical attributes or whatever. I do. I do. Uh, that's the whole reason why I thought maybe betting on Gamboa as a 16-1 to 1 underdog was a good idea because he's such a good athlete. Um, but what I want to make clear is Ivan Redcatch is essentially as big as Errol Spence. Nah, maybe like, you know, 15 pounds lighter on fight night. But the idea is they're the same height. So Errol, Denny Garcia already has experience fighting someone as big and awkward as uh, Errol Spence. And Errol Spence is going to be a little bit more, a little tighter, a little sharper, a little less awkward. Um, and I also think a little more predictable than Ivan Redcatch. Not that Errol Spence isn't going to make up for the fact, make up for that fact, but the fact that he hits harder and he's a little bit tougher uh, physically on the inside uh, than Ivan Redcatch was in their fight. But the timing, um, I do think, is going to favor Errol Spence again. He's he's seen these kind of tactics before, um, and I think he's really good on the line, as you can see here. He's able to catch the body shot, maybe gets a piece, I don't know, get off the line for the hook. I don't think that Errol Spence is going to be throwing any hooks. And then he's able to come back with counters, right to the dick, and then uh, left hook upstairs. Now, again, pulling back to his counter, or pulling off of his line and looking to counter, getting back on the line. And Errol Spence, I do think, is a little bit faster than Ivan Redcatch. I'm not sure if he's going to be as slick, which means that um, I do think Errol Spence's movements and, and fighting will be easier for Danny Garcia to read, but I'm not sure that he'll be able to pick up to the speed as quickly um, as he does against Ivan Redcatch when he starts landing good shots like this. Um, so I'm not sure if these shots will be open to him, but Danny Garcia, again, showing that good timing um, off of Ivan Redcatch's good you know, fainting or probing as he had a decent active guard in this fight. Uh, decent. It's not great, you know, but... Um, um, setting this shot up, but Danny Garcia able to kind of pull counter and get back on the line. Um, and I do think that this is something that uh, Danny Garcia may be able to threaten Errol Spence with to prevent him from opening up as often. Um, and again, I think that that may be a, an important idea as well if we're ever looking to score this fight um, because that will make it more often that Danny Garcia has more offense. And as we can see here, Danny Garcia even countering the body shots and then throwing right hands as he transfers his weight from the back foot, again, catching that shot and then going to the front foot with the right hand. Again, Errol Spence is fast. Errol Spence is big, but is he this fast? Is he getting off the line quicker than Ivan Redcatch does? I don't think he is. I don't think he will. Um, and... Again, the size is not going to be an issue as Ivan Redcatch and Danny and uh, Errol Spence are the exact same size, uh, both 5'9 and a half. So, where are the holes? Well, Danny Garcia throwing double right hands as he enters the line. Why is he not throwing a left hook? Why is he not controlling the space and crossing the line and getting his weight out of the front foot um, after he pushed his opponent to the back foot? Because... Normally, if you push your opponent to the back foot, their next weight transition is going to bring them back to the front foot. So Danny Garcia needs to be prepared for that, especially if he's pushing Errol Spence to the back foot. As when Errol Spence gets pushed to the back foot, he likes to come back with this straight left hand here. So if Danny Garcia is in the middle of throwing a double right hand, doesn't it stand reason that he's going to get caught with this straight left hand? So... Obviously, the double right hand is not going to be something he's going to be looking forward to or looking to use against Errol Spence. But what I want to wonder, what I want, what I do wonder is, why is he not throwing the left hand to get his weight back to the back foot? Why is he continuing to move forward um, and throwing the double right hand? Is that a trap? Is he waiting for Ivan Redcatch to come forward? Is he waiting for Ivan Redcatch uh, to make a mistake, uh, to re-enter the line? I don't think so. As we can see here, he's not countering, but he throws this shot. Um, but again, not following up with the left hand, not controlling that space with the left hand after. Um, and Ivan Redcatch may be free to re-enter the line, just like Danny Garcia is going to be free to re-enter the line after Errol Spence throws his straight left hand. 
right? Very similar parallels here. Um, Danny Garcia's left hand is down. He's stuck on the line. He's not really moving out of the position. He's not really controlling the space. Uh, we're still scared of the left hand, right? Think Teofimo Lopez versus uh, Vasily Lomachenko, right? If Errol Spence doesn't test this left hand, he's not going to know if it's coming off of that straight right hand to the body, right? He's not going to know if that left hand is prime. He's not going to know if Danny Garcia is in that position. Um, but if he's not testing it, he's not going to win the fight either. So we're going to find out. And I think that this position right here is going to play probably the biggest part in the entire fight um, is Danny Garcia getting to the front foot. Because as we can see here, I don't think he's going to have any problem throwing his straight right hands. Um, Errol Spence does not control the front foot all the time, allowing uh, Sean Porter to get to the front foot here, allowing him to come back with the cross here before tying up. Um, but he doesn't do he doesn't always do the greatest job of controlling this space, right? Keeping his opponent from getting to the front foot. Um, and that's going to be dangerous for him against Danny Garcia because Danny Garcia has a, uh, in a phenomenal left hook. So if, if Ivan Redcatch or Errol Spence in the fight allows Danny Garcia to get to the front foot and then he looks to move into Danny Garcia's line, Danny Garcia can transfer his weight to the back foot and transfer his weight through this left hook through Errol Spence's head um, uh, if Errol Spence isn't careful. Now that's going to be a very big... A very big problem for Errol Spence if Errol Spence can't stop Danny Garcia from getting to the front foot. Again, that's going to play a pivotal part in this fight. Um, but again, Danny Garcia not really utilizing his left hook here, not really finding a way to land punches, not really using it to control, to facilitate his ability to cross the line and change positions or defend himself, right? As he presses forward, using it a little bit there for control, a little bit there to punch him in the hip, right? But not really using it to continue controlling the space after his initial attack. Um, and again, that's going to be a problem for him if um, Danny Gar if Errol Spence does choose to try to counter him with the straight left hand um, off of the right hand. Now, this is also a high likelihood candidate for the fight and how the flow of the fight goes is this clip here. And then where's this clip here? I think both of these are going to be uh, very likely um, patterns in the fight, things that we see a lot of. Um, however, I'm not sure how well Danny Garcia is going to be able to move out of this position after getting here how quickly he'll be able to move out of that position to attack Errol Spence trying to counter him. And again, Errol Spence, not a traditional counterer, right? Because he's not pull countering this, right? He's not moving off the line. He's taking a step off the line and then re-entering the line. And again, that's because of the flawed technique with that Marvin Cook stuff. Uh, again, you guys can check out that video on my page. Um, it's, uh, is this good coaching? And uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon, more importantly, where you'll learn all the good shit. So... Anyway, let's see. What's this last clip here? Oh, this is the control clip. So, and then this this is the last clip. If there's not a lot of holding, those are going to be the three patterns of the fight. Um, what I anticipate is uh, the fight being here on the front foot and all of it being fought about whether or not Danny Garcia can cross the line after throwing his straight left his straight right hand. Um, but either Errol Spence dominates him on the on the front foot, as we can see. When Danny Garcia does get to the front foot, there's this little beat, this little rhythm where he gets stuck there, right? And if Errol Spence can take advantage of that and control him and set up his left hand, even though he doesn't always get his, the most amount of weight in it, um, he's such a big guy, I think that he may be able to put Danny Garcia down. Um, but if Danny Garcia is good at moving out of this position uh, because of the fact that Errol Spence lacks the right hooks, he lacks the um, consistent use of the cross, um, and he'll more often than not look to tie up instead of punch um, on the inside, especially early. Um, also, because of the technique, it's much more difficult for you to throw combinations if you're if you're not able to cross your line and you don't and you're standing in that kind of too straight line, too straight of a line um, style like that Marvin Cook, um, because you don't have the ability to bring your weight and punch with both hands. 
Um, as you can see here, Errol Spence really struggling to get his right hand into the into play there until he gets really – notice even in the last clip, he winds up really square, right? And that's when he looks like he's about to start cocking up his right hand uh, to throw that shot. But again, um, these are things that maybe he has been working on in camp. Um, you know, the injury thing, if we're going to talk about that at all, um, that's awful for Danny Garcia. Uh, because if he blasts Errol Spence out because of the timing, which, again, Danny Garcia has excellent timing and excellent rhythm, um, and I'm not going to find any of those clips now, uh, but excellent timing, excellent catching and countering, um, and um, pretty good power. Pretty good power. Um, now, he caught Ivan Redcatch with quite a few shots. I think Ivan Redcatch has better head movement than Errol Spence, but I think Errol Spence will make up for the lack of head movement um, and the difference in ability to take a punch with the fact that he's going to be like you know 15 or 20 pounds bigger than Ivan Redcatch was. Um, they're the same size and height. Um, and reach, I think the reach was very similar as well. I think it was only one inch. Um, but um, I'm not sure if Danny Garcia will be able to hurt Spence either, um, either to the body or to the head. Um, but maybe, you know, very likely he will, um, as Errol Spence does wind up being sometimes kind of an easy target to hit on the line with counter punches, as we saw in the Kell Brook fight. Um, he was very susceptible to the straight right-hand counter. And again, that's not something I'm really highlighting in this video, as I think most of the fight is going to wind up taking place with um, with Danny Garcia winding up being the fighter that goes first, because I think his counters are going to be pretty good. And I think that Errol Spence is going to have to respect them. But I think that this is going to be one of the places on the line that they spend most of their the most amount of time. Um, now, I could be super wrong. And Errol Spence could just be too big for Danny Garcia to even feel comfortable countering. Um, in which case, we have like Devin Haney and Gamboa, um, where Gamboa just kept running and then, you know, nothing happens and then everyone's disappointed. But um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that Danny Garcia, uh, he stood on the line and tried to counter with Keith Thurman. Um, Danny Garcia knows he can take a punch um, and he's taken Keith Thurman's punches, you know? Um, and I don't think that Errol Spence is even close to as big of a puncher as Keith Thurman, uh, the one punch kind of style. And I think that I think that um, that uh, Errol Spence doesn't punch in combination well enough to put Danny Garcia down if Keith Thurman couldn't do it either. Now, um, who do I think is going to win? I don't know, to be honest. I don't really know who I think is going to win. Um, I'm just hoping it's going to be a good fight, but I'll, I think I'll be rooting for Danny Garcia. Um, I think that he has the, um, the most amount of opportunity to impress in this fight. Um, if Errol Spence kind of just mows him down because he's so big, um, that's not super fun to watch. Um, so I will be hoping for Danny Garcia to be the one to uh, sit on the line and throw some bombs. Um, and uh, at I don't know what the odds are right now, but the last time I looked, I thought Danny Garcia was uh, close. To, was it close to four to one? I'm not sure. I, I haven't looked in a while. I don't know. I could be a super not even close, but um, I think that those are kind of decent odds. I do think that there's a good chance that if they fought um, five times, that Danny Garcia could win one of them, right? And that means that uh, that's a good bet, right? Uh, you make your money back. Not really. You lose some to the bookie, I guess. But um, anyway, I do think that uh, Danny Garcia has a better chance to win the fight than that. Um, and I think that um, that uh, the car crash plays, you know, uh, an unfortunate factor for Danny Garcia. Because again, like I was saying, if he blows Errol Spence out, um, no credit, right? They'll just say, oh, it was the car accident. Uh, if it's a really close fight, Oh, it was the car accident. He would have been way better before the car accident. Um, and then if Errol Spence dominates, then they go, oh, yeah, duh. Danny Cherry Garcia. Wait, Cherry Picker Garcia, Cherry Garcia. Um, you know, and I call him that too. But um, I do think that he has a really good shot at winning this fight. I don't think it's as easy as everyone's making it out to be uh, because Danny Garcia comes to fight. And um, um, I do think that on average, Danny Garcia has pretty good technique. 
Now, I don't know if he's going to be able to use this position to counter out of after blasting all his weight into it. I don't know how well he's going to be able to use his left hand, um, as we saw him throwing a lot of double right hands in the fight in Red Catch, uh, in, the, in the fight against Red Catch. So I'm not sure, um, but I think that that's going to be, again, one of the biggest, most pivotal areas of the fight. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my Patreon. There are a bunch of free videos on my Patreon too. Um, you can scroll through them, a bunch of free film studies. I usually put something out, you know, uh, once a month on there. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. Maybe not, le maybe less than once a month. I don't know. But if you've never been there, check it out because there'll be something.